So the Luxemburger basis consists of the implications from the canonical basis and confident rules between neighboring frequent intents. Why is this sufficient? So let's see how we can check if an association rule A implies B is frequent and confident enough. That is, if it is valid, is A implies B valid for, for the given mean support? And mean conf. Well, it turns out that if we have the canonical basis and the confident rules between neighbor and frequent intents, that's enough to answer this question. And also, if A implies B turns out to be frequent, this information is sufficient to compute the confidence of A implies B. Let's see how. So, first of all, uh, let's denote A double prime by C as a shortcut. And uh, A union B double prime by D. Um, now, we know that the support of uh, A implies B is the same as the support of C implies D and the same for confidence. So, sub A implies B equals sub of C implies D and uh, similar thing is true for the confidence. So, to determine uh, the support and confidence of A implies D, it's sufficient to determine the support and confidence of C implies D. First of all, let's check if D is frequent. If D isn't frequent, If it, if it isn't frequent, then we don't have a rule that has D as a premise. And if it's frequent, then we have rules corresponding to D as, as a premise. So we can check this from this information, using this information. Now, if D isn't frequent, then uh, C implies D cannot be frequent either. And uh, so A implies B isn't frequent. So, suppose that D is frequent. Um, then there are two cases. The first case is that it may happen that C equals D. Well, A and B may be different, but it may happen that A double prime is the same as A union B double prime, which means that A implies B is a valid implication. So, if C equals D, then the confidence of A implies B equals 1. And so, uh, D is frequent, so this, this association rule is also frequent, and its confidence is 1, so it's valid for the given support, for the given mean support and mean confidence. What happens if C is not equal to D? Well, in this case, we have D, which is a frequent intent, and C, which is a subset of D, and is also an intent. We have two frequent intents, and one is a subset of the other. So there must be a chain of neighboring frequent intents between them. So this chain looks like this. Um, C1, which is equal to C, and this C1 is different from the next neighboring intent. And then let's say we have uh, a K of them. And this CK is in fact D. So we have a chain of uh, 
frequent intents and and then neighbors and so for each pair in this chain we have a rule here and because we have a rule here uh, we can compute the confidence of uh, A implies B simply as the product of uh, confidences of rules CI implies CI plus 1 where I ranges from 1 to k minus 1. And we know the confidences of all these rules from here, from this part of the Luxemburger basis. What about the support of A implies B? Well, the support of A implies B equals the support of D. Now, let's look at an example. So, this is uh, the concept lattice of uh, a formal context um, over attributes A, B, C, D, E, and F. And we have a hundred objects that have only attribute F, we have 50 objects that have F and E, we have 40 objects that have A, B, C, and so on. That's the meaning of the labeling. Now, Let's say that our minimal support is uh, 35 and our minimal confidence, well, let it be 0 0.35. First of all, we are going to look at the part of the lattice that satisfies this support threshold. So, this will include all the concepts except for the bottom one, which has no objects at all, and uh, this one that has 30 objects. 30 is less than 35, so we don't take it. So, what we get is this upper part of the lattice, which is, by the way, the iceberg lattice. So, in fact, the problem of computing frequent attribute sets is precisely the problem of computing a, an iceberg lattice. But now we will also need uh, the edges of this diagram in this frequent part of our lattice. Um, right, so the Luxemburger basis consists of two parts. First, we need the canonical basis. And uh, the canonical basis here, if we look at this part of the diagram, will include the following implications. C implies AB. So, if you have C, then you must have A and B. The confidence of this association rule is 1. B implies A, well, because A and B label the same node. And A implies B for the same reason. And that's all. Of course, we have other implications, but they're not frequent. These are the only frequent implications from the canonical basis. So, let's look at this more interesting second part. Confident rules between neighboring frequent intents. So, these rules are rules between these two nodes, and these two nodes, and these two nodes, and these two nodes. Um, this and this and we don't need this rule because D is not frequent and we also don't need this edge and this edge because the bottom concept is not frequent. Right, so let's compute the confidence of each such rule. So this is the rule empty set implies F. Its confidence is one third because we have a hundred objects here, a hundred objects that have F out of 300 objects that we have in total. What about this rule? Here 50 of the rules, 50 of 
of the objects that have f also have this attribute e. So here we have um, the confidence one half. And this confidence satisfies our threshold because one half is greater than 0 0.35. So we add this rule f implies e and its confidence is one half. We don't add this rule because one third is less than uh, 0 0.35. So this is the rule that we take. Uh, what about this rule? Here we have 150 divided by 300. This gives us one half. So we take this rule. This is empty set implies E. Here we have 50 out of 150. So this is one third and it doesn't pass our threshold. Here we have 40 divided by 100, which is, uh, which is, uh, well, it's uh, 0 0.4 or 2 fifth. And this is more than 0 0.35. So we add this rule. AB implies C with the threshold, with the confidence 2 fifth. So we take this one and this one. And that's it. So this is the Luxemburger basis corresponding to our mean support and mean confidence. Now, suppose we lower our mean confidence a little bit. So let's say a mean conf uh, equals, well, maybe 0 0.25, one fourth. Uh, in this case, in addition to these three association rules, we would add other rules, such as uh, the rules with uh, confidence one third. So we would add empty set implies F one third. We would also add uh, E implies F with one third. And, uh, and that's it. So this is the Luxemburger basis for MinSOP equal to 35 and mean conf equal to one fourth. It includes all these association rules plus these additional two. Um, so what about and as what about the association rule empty set implies C? Let's check whether it's valid, whether it satisfies our support and confidence thresholds. Well we're going to use this algorithm. First, we compute the closure of empty set and C. Well, the closure of empty set is empty set and the closure of C is ABC. So we know that C implies AB. So the closure of C is ABC. So the support and confidence of empty set implies C is the same as the support and confidence of empty set implies ABC. And ABC is frequent. We know that it's frequent. It has a frequency 40, which is above 35. Good. Um, so we are in one of these two cases. Well, C is empty and D is ABC. So C isn't equal to D. So we're here. Uh, so we have two different concept intents two different frequent intents. One is empty, the one is ABC. And indeed there's a chain uh, that starts in the empty set and ends in ABC. And it includes just one more concept intent, AB. So we have uh, the following chain, empty set, AB, ABC. And we know the confidence of both of both these rules. So empty implies AB well this is <laughs> we should know this rule. This is the one I forgot to mention. Uh, so the confidence of this rule uh, 
is 100 divided by 300, so this is one third. And so this doesn't satisfy this threshold, but it satisfies this threshold. So we must add this association rule. Empty set implies AB with confidence one third to the second version of our Luxemburger basis. Right, so now indeed we have this implication. This association rule, empty set implies AB with confidence one third. And we also have a association rule AB implies uh, ABC here with a confidence two fifth. So we use this rule, we multiply one third and two fifth and we get the confidence of Uh, empty set implies C. This is uh, one third times two fifth. This is two fifteenth. And this is less than 0 0.25. So this association rule is not confident enough. Its confidence is less than min conf. So we may say that it's not valid for our min sub and min conf. This is how we can compute the support and confidence of every frequent association rule in our concept lattice. And if an association rule is not frequent or is not confident enough, we can also recognize this.